Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Always a big day. October 13th. Today is Sammy Hagar's birthday. I believe he is 72. Um, he doesn't look 72. He doesn't act 72. I want to grow up to be Sammy Hagar, I think. Um, anyway, happy birthday, Sam. Sorry you didn't get to go to Cabo this year. Maybe next year. Okay. Time's a wasting. Let's dig into Tuesday's Q&A. This comes from Philip. Philip says, hope you're doing well. I am. Thank you very much. I've been going over a video in which you talked about ankle sprains and why they occur. You stated that you have to immediately start resisting, um, i.e. putting your medial calcaneus on the ground in order to avoid spraining your ankle. What strategies would you use to reinforce that resisting component and potentially prevent a certain number of ankle sprains? Thank you so much for the crazy amount of free content you're putting out. Well, you're very, very welcome, Philip. And I like the fact that you said potentially prevent. I don't think there's, there's any way that we're ever going to prevent um, injuries. We might be able to mitigate them to a certain degree. And I think that the answer comes down to, to preparation. We prepare people as best we can. And then there's going to be circumstances that we just can't, can't control. Um, all of these injuries tend to be multifactorial, especially in dynamic situations. But with that in mind, let's do a quickie review of some, some, some foot stuff and then we'll I'll actually show you a little bit of a, a progressive strategy that you might be able to utilize at least conceptually you'll be able to use use this um, that, that may actually help you improve the ability to produce these these forces during during the propulsive phase especially with cutting and and, and such okay so we grab our foot so remember we've got a, a heel rocker, ankle rocker, toe rocker, that's kind of common vernacular. And what we're gonna say is when we're landing, we're gonna be landing in this early propulsive uh, foot strategy. So we're gonna have a, a, a higher arch. We've got a tibia that's gonna be externally rotated. Now, this is not a, a force producing position um, under most circumstances. If you try to produce force under the circumstance, you're gonna to tend to wanna to roll to, to laterally. So again, this is, this is the mechanism for your typical lateral ankle sprain. So just like Philip was saying, we wanna get that medial calcaneus down to the ground. So during this, this, this ankle rocker phase, what we've got is the tibia that's internally rotating. We're moving towards the traditional pronation. That gets the medial calcaneus down to the ground and it moves us through the middle propulsive phase towards max propulsion where we're going to apply the greatest force into the ground, which is at, at that point of maximum pronation. Okay, so we have to be able to capture this, this middle phase of propulsion and then max propulsion as a protective mechanism against this ankle sprain, but it's also our highest force producing. So once again, we go back from, well, are we really preventing injuries or are we just preparing people effectively? And again, I lean towards the, the preparation side of things. Now, so let's talk about how we could, we could reinforce this concept as we move somebody through um, sort of a, a dynamic progression, if you will. Keep in mind, this is not an exact progression of any kind. There are many baby steps that we can take. But first and foremost, what I would say is that we want to be able to capture this medial calcaneus, the internal rotation of, of the tibia. We're going to be representing max propulsion with the internal rotation of the hip. So if you needed some test retest is can you move through this progression and, and continue to capture hip internal rotation? It's a pretty good sign that you're, that you're being successful. But we're just going to start in a static position. So we're going to show Eric here going through this progression with us. And so he's just in a static position in a split squat, medial calcaneus on the ground, and he's moved the tibia through this middle propulsive phase. And so he's going to hang on to tibial intra rotation, medial calcaneus on the ground, hip intra rotation. Once we can do this statically and maintain uh, control where we have uh, the maintenance of, of hip internal rotation, now we want to start to add some dynamic element to it. So he's just going to drop into the split squat and then try to capture this exact same position. Okay, so he's got to absorb some more force. He's still got to be able to maintain the, the medial calcaneus contact and, and again, continue to capture internal rotation. Next, we can add a rotational element into this externally rotated position. So we're driving a force 
into external rotation that he's going to have to resist to hang on to that medial heel, hang on to the internal rotation. And, and again, we, we've increased the forces that he's have to withstand. We can magnify that even further. So we're going to use a water bag in this situation, which has some momentum to it that he's going to have to control as well. So this teaches us how to manage some of these internal forces that we produce within ourselves that we also have to manage as part of this, this dynamic, dynamic movement. Um, once we do that, we can move through this, this full middle propulsive phase with something as simple as, as a sprinter step up. So he does the step up, he's moving the, the ankle through an earlier phase of this middle propulsion and he goes all the way through to the end of propulsion um, and we can actually increase load and stress. And so now we've, we've established this relationship from the ground all the way up. So we've got control at the pelvis, we've got control at the knee, we've got uh, control at the ankle. Once we do this, we bring it back to the ground and we just slowly increase the, the dynamics and the forces. So we might start with something that, that looks like like an A march. And this is going to take the foot into the position of max propulsion where the calcaneus is going to start to break from the ground. And this is actually the point where we're going to produce maximum force. And then once again, we just increase the dynamics. So this becomes an, an A skip. We can eventually break people into to any number of like the mock drills or, or any kind of sprinting drills. If we're working on change of direction, we move him into uh, the, the dynamics of, of sort of flatter cuts where the, the load is a little bit less. And then finally, we get to where we would produce maximum force with, the, with a really sharp cut where we're moving in and, in and out. Um, all the while, we're going to monitor him for the ability to make sure he gets the medial calcaneus to the ground. And we can do so in, in any number of means. But again, I think hip internal rotation is always a great way to, to monitor that because if we can hang on to the internal rotation, then we know we have at least the mechanics that are available to us to, to keep that medial calcaneus to the ground. So Philip, I hope this gives you a little bit of a representation of, of what I was talking about. And again, keep in mind, this is not an absolute prog progression of any kind. There's a lot of baby steps you can take uh, in between all of the things that, that I've shown today. So if you have another question, please ask it at askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com. Have a great Tuesday. Happy birthday, Sammy, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>